Hey there, welcome in today. Got a fun, fantastic project on modeling clay, making and turning it into a favorite food type. This is a project that I started this year. Um, I have a bunch of different uh, examples out here just to show you kind of the different things that you can make with modeling clay. I'll use some of those as examples, but this one is a food. So I'm gonna pull apart the kind of two foods that I have, put these to the side for right now. I will go back to some of those examples, especially my cool basket that I made on there. The Model Magic clay that I use is the white. Um, these are the bags that I get that my students really, really, really enjoy. Um, usually what I will do is I'll just break them off kind of a chunk. Usually I can get about three, maybe four um, students per bag of this to kind of go across for this project. Usually I tell them they get about the size of their fist um, with, with this project, so about this size. Kind of about the size of my fist, yeah, I would say, on that. So when they get their model magic, um, give them a little time to kind of soften it up and kind of feel. Um, even before they actually get the model magic itself, which I just kind of wanted to touch because it's really, really fun to play with, um, they actually just start designing. They actually get a sheet of paper and they just start to be like a food, like a meal type food. Um, it can be like a candy, it can be a drink, or like a shake, or ice cream, or a dessert. Um, so it, it just has to kind of be in the food category, I, I guess. So what they need to think about first, and usually I give them a research day, and basically what they need to get their clay is a sheet of paper with their design kind of well laid out and well planned, because my classes are set up that it's only 45 minutes. So it's only 45 minutes that you get to build, color, and decorate your clay food project. So the, you, you gotta be, have a really good plan. The plan um, so the basic first thing that my students are kind of required to have. So you need a plan. First part of their plan uh, will be designing and deci will be deciding what kind of food that they're going to do. Say I was going to do a cheeseburger. So I would have a cheese burger idea but then be thinking about all the different pieces that are going to go because you're not just going to get your clay and then start kind of molding this into a cheeseburger bun and then just start coloring. Okay, so you're gonna have to pull it apart into separate pieces. So thinking about those separate pieces, um, I would have one section where the bun you know, would be, then I would probably have, you know, a piece that would have to be cheese, and then I would ha probably have a piece, ooh, what's that? Oh, that'll be lettuce. So that would be lettuce, maybe I would have some strips of bacon. I like bacon on my cheeseburger. And then I would actually have the burger or the patty itself. And then I would have the, you know, the other kind of bun part of it. So really I might have like six different pieces that I'm going to have to bring and break this piece into. So be a mini or a small version of whatever food type that is. Um, but some people might not be doing something as complicated as this. So maybe their idea would just be a donut. So then on their donut, um, they would just have, you know, the shape itself. Maybe they would have to have a section of the clay for the frosting. And then maybe a smaller section of the clay for like the sprinkles. So then there, it's just three. But I want them to kind of start breaking those um, ideas into different categories and different um, designs just so it makes it easier on that day that they can just bring this sheet of paper. And that's how they get their clay, is that just bringing that sheet of paper gets them their clay, gets them their idea, they can set it aside, they can set it with this, they already know that, okay, I gotta break, you know, maybe this part, you know, for the bun, this part, Maybe this would be enough for the cheese. Maybe this would be enough for the lettuce. This might be enough for the, the bacon. Uh, probably don't need that much for bacon. <laughs> Maybe I could use that for bacon. Maybe this would be for the patty itself, and then this for the bottom bun. So they really have to break it down into all those different sections and then start coloring. And the coloring part, I will go over quickly. Um, the coloring part is really, really fun uh, to do. Uh, but it is a little bit different. So if I'm gonna try to do like a brown for like a bun or even like a donut, um, 
it's not going to go this brown right away. You remember that you're mixing white and a brown. So it's going to start off with a little bit of tan. So let me. All right, so I got a little bit of a brown texture, which is a little bit tan. Right now, you can see some of the brown kind of marbleized in there. If you want that kind of those kind of streaks and those lines to kind of go away, you really got to keep mixing it and mixing it and pulling it apart and setting it on top of each other and just keep on going and mixing it up. If you like that, maybe that's part of your design. Um, so say I was doing a donut, like this would be a good um, probably color for the donut. Um, some people kind of think of a donut, you know, kind of going with a hole in the middle. That might be a little challenge to do for that, but you could also, so think about different ways of kind of building each shape. You could also kind of roll this out nice and then kind of spin it around in that shape. That's kind of like a donut shape. But say I wanted this for a burger and I wanted it a little bit darker than this. This might be good for my bun on top of the burger, but say if I wanted this for the actual patty of burger and I'm just not, you know, when I, I forgot, I forgot to say that when you're adding the color, kind of pushing the color into it and then mixing it in and in. And sometimes I'll just kind of mix it up as I'm actually pushing it onto there just to go a little bit faster. Um, but you're not actually coloring it. I don't think that goes as quick. I think actually pushing the color into there goes a little bit quick. So again, it'll start turn, turning a little bit darker. And if by then it's still not the darkness that you want, then maybe what you could do is just kind of mold the shape into whatever shape that you're doing and then start to add some of that color. but it actually looks pretty nice and brown. So that could be for my burger itself by just adding this and adding this color around that versus mixing and mixing for long, long periods of time. Um, you could do something similar like that if you did like a pizza for like the spaghetti sauce. Um, that might work a little bit better. I've seen people do this for meatballs, for like spaghetti and meatballs on there. Um, so that's a good little hack or trick for that. Um, so from there, then you start building each individual. Um, coloring is is a little bit of a challenge, but I said I think the littler the piece, the easier it is to add those colors. So start out small would be my suggestion. A lot of my students did really, really cool examples, so I'll show you some of those. Um, just some of the creativity and imagination and just really detailed. A lot of them got really detailed and really into this project. So it was really, really fun and a win for me. End of it, you know, start to put those pieces together and think of how it would look a little bit realistic. Like for my candy cane, you know, I definitely added kind of the pink. So for this, I think I just did like a strip like a snake kind of form of white. So I did kind of a snake form of white and then I did the same thing with like a red or a pink and then I kind of molded and twisted those both together, you know, like this. Molded and twisted those together and then that's how I got kind of this texture onto there. And then for the donut, kind of a similar, like I told you about kind of taking the donut shape and kind of spinning it around. I did that with the bottom part of it yeah you can actually see the little seam on there and then it's covered up in frosting and then added some sprinkles onto there Ooh, where's my camera there I think I got it oh there so I thought that turned out good as well so definitely I think this is a really cool project it's a really fun building exercise um, you can add different textures onto there this one I just this isn't a piece of food but I guess I, I could picture this as like a cookie or something but you can definitely see the different textures that you can add onto it. Um, the only reason that I had something like this was to show you guys that you can actually apply different clay onto clay itself and then it'll kind of stick because it kind of sticks onto it for my little owl there. I added the different features onto there but for my dice added white onto an already colored piece and then it sticks on there and it's really pretty strong right now. So you can add that. Um, you can get a really, really true color. That's why I had my basketball. Um, you can see the orange. It, it didn't 
it definitely didn't look as bright orange right away, but then as I let it dry, it um, added that orange on there, and then once it dried, then I actually put the different lines on there, but the colors are really, really cool. You can get different colors and mix them together, and it looks really, really cool. So thank you guys for viewing this project. Um, have some fun with it, and as always, I am Mr. Shooty. This is Mr. Shooty's Art Channel, and we'll talk to you guys later.